Today we are going to learn how to create animation in Canvas Vantage and see how to animate the sun, camera, and wind. I'm Ahyar and uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, before we begin the tutorial, uh, I will give you a brief introduction to Chaos Vantage. Chaos Vantage is part of the Chaos Group and is uh, used for real-time rendering. Essentially, it's a rendering engine based on ray tracing and GPU uh, based, uh, meaning uh, it works with your uh, graphic card. Currently, it supports RTX graphics uh, graphic cards from NVIDIA. This means if you're working with V-Ray and uh, software uh, that uses the V-Ray engine such as uh, 3ds Max, Rhino, SketchUp uh, or others, you can render your files in real time within Chaos Vantage. One of its uh, outstanding features in uh, for 3ds Max and other softwares is the live link uh, capability which make it exceptional. Let's dive into the project. The project I've chosen is uh, one of the sample projects from uh, Chaos Vantage. I've selected the sample SketchUp project, downloaded and uh, loaded into Chaos Vantage. A quick note about the version I'm using. I'm working with version 2.5. Version 2.6 was recently released. So to get it started, I will navigate and show you the project from all angles. You can easily move around the uh, software using the W, S, D, and E, Q keys uh, on your keyboard. To select objects, uh, you can use this option to select, hide, freeze, or uh, even delete the objects. One new feature added in uh, version 2.5 and later is the ability uh, to animate vegetations. Uh, so some objects in the Chaos Cosmos uh, come with built-in uh, wind animations and we can easily uh, drag and drop these uh, objects into your uh, project. So it's really easy to work with them. For example, if Chaos Cosmos is enabled, the panel on the right will be active allowing you to select and download objects of your uh, choice. A new uh, capability added recently is that uh, some objects like trees are available in different seasonal states such as autumn or spring, making it much easier to illustrate seasonal changes. So, um, once downloaded, you can drag and drop objects into your project. Uh, for instance, uh, I will place uh, one here, go to the camera view and adjust its scale using the magenta handle. I scale it uh, symmetrically to ensure it uh, fits the scene like this. Okay, for example, now I can also select and uh, turn on interior lights. Next, I will add a few more uh, objects to the scene. So again, I drag and drop an object uh, making sure the Z axis is currently aligned. Afterward, I select the camera and check that everything looks right. So, if you notice, the wind effect is automatically applied to these objects and you can easily uh, adjust the intensity or uh, even direction of the wind. Um, these objects already have a preset wind animation, so uh, be sure to download objects that include wind animations. Perfect. So now I will search Chaos Cosmos again to find another object. If you explore these objects, you will notice their seasonal states can be adjusted, so it's really a nice feature. For instance, I will choose this tree, switch to its uh, um, autumn state, or uh, for example, uh, it can be also a different object, uh, for example, this one. So, autumn and download it, and then I drag and drop it into the desired location in the scene. So like this, 
drag, drop and simply position the tree like this. So I will double check the positioning of the trees from the camera view to ensure everything is in place. If necessary, I can easily move or duplicate the trees and place them in different parts of the scene. Now, if we want to test the wind effect, you will see that with just one click, these objects already have their wind animation enabled and everything looks great. I will use the same object again, try duplicating it a few times and create a spring and autumn vibe in the scene. So finally, I will make sure to position the trees appropriately in the desired locations. So, like this, I will change the scale of them. I'm trying to position them in, its, uh, in, their, in their right uh, position. So once I've adjusted the trees, uh, it's time to move uh, uh, to the uh, foreground. So, in uh, Chaos Cosmos, uh, there are plants uh, with animated wind effects. For example, I will select uh, um, this plant. So download it and drag and drop it into the project. So after adjusting its z-axis, I will try to find the right z-axis and leave the object there. So I will scale the object, scale down and duplicate it across the green space. To distribute the objects, I select uh, create uh, chaos scatter, uh, choose the uh, object from here and specify the surface for uh, distribution. For instance, I will select the ground surface after clicking the objects or uh, scattered. Um, Certain number and scale may not may need uh, adjustment. I tweak the scale to reduce their size and then increase the instances until I achieve the desired result. So I will uh, try to scale scale them down and then go back to the first step and increase the number of uh, instances. So this process involves going back and forth until we achieve the desired result. So then I continue adjusting both the scale and the quantity to reach the desired outcome. But as you can see, with just a few simple clicks, I can easily scatter objects in Chaos Vantage environment. So we're almost done with the foreground. After completing the scatter process, I can return to the wind settings and check once more to see how it looks in the end. At first glance, we easily achieve our desired wind effect and by increasing or decreasing the intensity, adjusting the direction and tweaking the wind settings, you can easily uh, you can also reach the result you're aiming for. So the next, uh, I will make minor adjustments uh, to the scale in my project to achieve the final uh, desired result. From this section, uh, you can also reposition objects along the X or uh, Y axis uh, or use the random seed feature to scatter objects in a random pattern. It provides a randomized effect. I will set it to a value to a value appropriate for my camera's perspective. Now, I will uh, check the uh, overall wind effect across the entire scene. Like this, I think the current intensity and direction are just right. With this section. You can make further adjustments until you're satisfied with the result. The next step is animating the camera. To animate the camera, 
you can navigate the scene and uh, I will lower the uh, navigate speed using the W key on the keyboard. I will move forward a step or two. At this point, I will click add camera to add another camera to my project. Something like this maybe and click add camera. Now, if you click on the previous camera, you will notice an animation effect occurs between the cameras, creating a forward and backward movement effect that we can see in real time. I will also adjust the wind intensity a little more and ensure everything between the two cameras looks as I want. In the next step, I will add the cameras to the timeline below. From this section, you can add the cameras to the animation timeline. I will first add camera 4 and then at the end camera 5. You can also increase the frame per second to something like 120 or more, but even 30 frames per second works fine. You can also adjust the project duration by dragging the plus sign to the right. Right now it's set to 8 seconds. So the transition will occur over this period. I will set the preview speed to 1 to see how the 8 second animation will play out normally. For rendering, go to the render setup section and activate the sequence. I will set the resolution to my desired value and lower the samples to speed up the animation process. I will set the denoiser to only final pass and keep the desktop mode at responsive. In the frame range section, I will keep the frame per second at 30 for now. And looking at the last frame, which is 234. So I will set I will set it to 234. I will also switch the output format from image to mp4. After configuring the settings, I will choose the folder to save the output and click save. Finally, by clicking start, the rendering will begin. Processing each frame one by one and uh, like this and in the end it will render 234 frames resulting in an 8 second video now you can view the saved video which for now only includes the camera animation in the next step i want to animate the sunlight to do this i will select the sun and enable its uh, animate mode. Activate animated uh, geolocation feature, which has two parts. The first lets you adjust the day, and the second lets you adjust the time. It, I will initially set the time to 7 a.m. and click set the start key. Then I will select 11 p.m and uh, click set end key essentially i will set the start key for day and end key for night next i will right click on this section and set the duration to eight seconds before confirming now the sun animation is set for eight seconds but you can tweak the time settings further for the desired effect for example, I think 7 a.m. is too early, so I will uh, remove that keyframe and instead set it to 2 p.m. Like this. So then, uh, click set the start key. Now the transition starts from 2 p.m. and goes until 11 p.m. I will preview the animation again and uh, I think it looks uh, nice. After animating the sun, the process was uh, uh, quite straightforward and I will return to the render setup section, the same settings uh, 
uh, we configured earlier will be uh, will work also here i won't make any changes to the settings uh, this time i will start rendering frame by frame and saving the video like before after waiting uh, for the rendering to finish you will see the final output so we've successfully animated the sunlight wind and the camera at the same time i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you find it helpful please give it a like as it greatly supports me in this journey and share this video with your friends until the next video thank you and bye bye